Hit now. Yeah. 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 Bobby back. From a difference is doing it. And back with our very first disc art giveaway of the year 2023. And we are going to be doing this one a little bit different than we normally do. You see, here's like the two most popular requests that I've been getting from all of you recently. One, first, can you like do some stuff to show off some ideas for how to work with colored plastic? Boom. That one's easy. Yes, today we are gonna take on pink. Two, second, all right, can you try to do some stuff that's like a little bit more in the beginner to intermediate range instead of like all these crazy seven, eight hour weed bombs, <laughs> weed out sessions that you're taking on so that like we can all, you know, so that we can all do it maybe together. Yeah, so that we can all do it together. Mm, yes and yes today we're gonna take on an op art design that all of us can do and we're gonna put it all over some pink plastic so I found this super dope op art design it's called a Frasier spiral and I slapped it on this pink Discmania Neo Instinct looks awesome right just wait until you see this thing spinning it is so super trippy so that is what's up for grabs in this month's uh giveaway but even more importantly is the subject of our pending colored plastic everybody can do this one tutorial for this month here's the other thing that's like a little different about this month's tutorial i'm sure you already noticed when you clicked your way over here that this video is obnoxiously long listen you are a true doer just for <laughs> just for clicking on it well that's because instead of our normal super speed tutorials going by time lapse with it like a beat behind them and then like all the captions telling you what I'm doing instead for the first time in like maybe two years I recorded a full commentary tutorial where I am going to not just walk but talk you through every step that I took on this bad boy so that you can like whip one right up for yourself. Honestly, it's a near miracle that I was able to get it down to 45, <laughs> the tutorial down to just 45 minutes. It was originally a little over three hours of footage that I just cut and cut and cut and cut. Nonetheless, I realized that is a lot of me rambling to have to sit through. So I did my best to break it all up into chapters, which you, you know, you should be able to see if you mouse over the progress bar right down below me high tech bobby <laughs> and then that way you know you can skip to like just the stuff that you need or that you want to check out if you don't need any of it or want it and like you're just here for the giveaway it's totally cool i <laughs> i get it okay we're doing the giveaway stuff the same way that we always do just be a subscriber comment down below on this video and then share this sucker with another haka and you are all the way up in there and like if you want you don't have to sit through all my rambling you can just comment down below and bounce but listen before you do like if there ever was a tdd army uh, tutorial video to really share with another huck buddy this is the one because like not only are we giving away this crazy spinner but like this is the one that everybody can do and like get started in on funking up their favorite plastic circles. And listen, to remove all of the excuses for not jumping into the rabbit hole with the rest of all these TDD Army nut bags, we are going to be running a crazy deal on our full diet yourself kits that's gonna include one of these exact same Fraser Spirals stencils in there with all the goodies and bits and pieces you need to start funking up your whole bag and listen i'm telling you comment down below and bounce if you want but share this sucker with another hucka and before you know it that hucka is going to be dying discs for yo bag <laughs> that's the fever okay that's more than enough of the rambling for now i will save all of the rest of that crap for the other side of the tutorial and all the details on the coupon and yada yada but i mean if we don't get this thing started now this video might never end <laughs> So I really hope 
that you can dig it because I put a ton of work into this thing and that you come out having learned a ton and I will catch you on the flip side. All right, strap in for some real doing it. Mm. All right, let's do this. First things first, we're gonna clean the disc. I got some 100% acetone here. And some patent balls. I'm gonna wipe this stamp off. Get a fresh one going. I'm never pressing real hard because it's easy to scar the plastic, nor am I rubbing in one spot for too long for that same reason. Even when there's like a single little spot, like right here, that I need to get still kind of trying to spread it around and not just like pound it out on that one spot. All right, feeling good about that. Next, I'm gonna start to get the stencil ready. Top to my turntable right there. And then I got the stencil right here, which the only thing I'm gonna do for right now is just weed out the center point rest I'm gonna leave in there. I'm gonna need to get my super geek glasses here. <sighs> Boom, just the center point. Now we're gonna get it onto some transfer paper that we can transfer it over to the stencil, or over to the disc. So I'm just usually using regular contact brand contact paper. Now, I'm gonna lay this down onto the contact paper as cleanly and smoothly as I can. I got my little squeegee here. I'm gonna use it to help me, especially when I'm getting started. And as best as I can, I try to rub the majority of the bubbles out while it's still upside down like this because the squeegee just moves way easier and cleaner over this backing than it does over the contact paper on the other side. Now, I'm still gonna clean up some of the bubbles once I flip it over, but it's easier to push hard and slide it on that side. Oh, look at that, that's really clean. But the idea of getting the bubbles out here is so that the contact paper is fully in contact <laughs> with the stencil and holds it all in place when, when we're putting it on the disc here in a second. I'm feeling really good about that. Now I'm gonna peel the backing off of the vinyl. Boom. Stencil's in really good shape. Okay, now, because the top of my turntable is translucent, I can put a light underneath it and use it as a light table. A light table works better, but... Oh man, my batteries are dying. Plan B, cell phone light. Yeah, now the light is shining right through that center hole that we just weeded out. I'm gonna get my geek glasses back on again, just so that I can make sure I get this right on the mummy spot. And then you got the center of the nipple right in there. We're gonna turn her over, match that up, and lower her down ever so carefully. Centered. Bang. All right, now flip this puppy over. And now this is like one of the most important steps when you're doing stencil dies, is getting the vinyl down onto the disc as clean as possible. People always come and I never get it down as clean as you do. Okay, I'm doing a couple things. One is I'm always holding the vinyl up like you see me doing over here on the side that I'm, that I'm moving towards. I'm gonna turn my cell phone light off. So you see I'm holding this side up and then pushing towards that side. That's so that I don't create a wrinkle right here on the edge. It seems like a little deal, but this like is so 
clutch and getting it down smooth all the way to the edge. So as I'm working out from the center, trying to push bubbles out, I'm always holding up the vinyl at the end of where I'm pushing. If you don't have one of these little squeegees, they're super cheap on Amazon. They come in every Cricut tool pack you, you, you can find. But a credit card works just as well. I used a credit card for years doing this. Also, the back of your thumbnail works great. But you gotta give it a break because sometimes it heats up. <laughs> Okay, now I pick the whole thing up and then I'm gonna lay it down nice and smooth and press the edges down. Stretch it this way now that that edge is pressed down over there before pressing it down. Press it down on the sides. There's a reason behind all this, trust me. And then now I'm gonna peel off the contact paper. Now there's a bunch of little tiny itty bitty pieces on this stencil that you know can get pulled up with the contact paper so what I do is I wrap the contact paper right back down against itself like this when I'm pulling instead of like pulling it like this because that's what makes you pull pieces up so it's always folded down against itself when I'm doing this and I'm watching carefully for pieces to get pulled up with it it wanted to pull that little guy up right there all right now we're in the clear bang all right now what I do I'm just pushing down around the edge of the disc and stretching the vinyl out just a little bit you can press too hard and rip it which if you do it really sucks so like better to push light and go around twice than push too hard and rip it but the object of this is to make it so that when I wrap the excess vinyl around to the back side in just a minute here that this helps it turn the corner, the vinyl turn the corner of the disc and not create wrinkles that want to wrap from the backside around to the front. Because if, if a wrinkle wraps on the front and then gets like up to our cut line there, we're screwed. That's going to be like a guaranteed bleed mark. So stretching it out just a little bit like this makes it so much easier to just give it a little pull and wrap it cleanly around to the back. Okay, now we're going to wrap the excess vinyl around to the back side of the disc. That could have went better, could have went worse. Now, when I'm wrapping it, I make two little handles on the back out of the excess that I can use to drop it in the hot dip or a bed or whatever. So I start with the handle and then I'm pulling up on the vinyl just a little bit not too strong but to help that part that I stretch kind of wrap and cover the corner and then immediately once I get it down smooth on the edge I'm pressing the vinyl down onto the back side of the rim to hold it in place all the way around doing that same thing and you know you know you're doing it right when the little wrinkles on the back are perpendicular with the edge of the rim when they start coming up on all sorts of funky angles, that you're in trouble. And this is gonna be my other handle, opposite of the first one. Oh man, look how close that is for us there. That could've went way worse. That vinyl ripped any further. Now that I got it all wrapped and down and smooth, now I go back around, kind of just get it all down really good. That first press, I'm just pressing it down enough to hold it in place so that my edge is smooth. Then I go around, kind of just secure it all and press it down. All right, if we did it right, we should have no wrinkles on the front that curl around from the back to the front side. Pretty darn good. And I'm just going to kind of clean it up a little. If there's some bubbles on here that I'm not happy about, I just kind of push them with my fingernail towards a cut line. And then when they get there, let it gas out. I 
the rest I'm going to take care of during the weeding process because some of this vinyl is going to come up and then that'll make getting the bubbles one of the parts that stay down out a lot easier. All right, let's try to weed this bad boy out. I'm going to put the geek glasses back on for that. Boy, this gets so teeny tiny down here. key to this whole thing is going to be keeping these little teeny tiny squares down here close to the center in place and not moving them while picking up the vinyl that's supposed to come out around them. Last one! Now, like the areas where this is gonna, is most susceptible to bleeding, we did pretty good wrapping it, so I'm not concerned about any wrinkles coming up to the edge here. But where we can, I can see the old impression of the old stamp, it's burnt in, it's, it's, there's a little bit of embossment to it. So like, I wanna make sure that the vinyl, where it's in contact with the old stamp, is pressed down really good. I'm gonna kinda go over those areas extra now with the back of my thumbnail trying to rub it in. All right, that should be good. Now I gotta tear this place down and set it up for a hot dip. And we're gonna hot dip this part that we just weeded out black. We're gonna do something special for the other section. Let's just watch it spin though. I gotta watch it spin just once. <laughs> just once, okay? Oh yeah, this is gonna look so dope when it's done. Here's the crazy thing. It's not even really a spiral. Even though it's called a Fraser spiral, it's not. This is like a circle, not a spiral, but it looks like a spiral. Oh my God, that's so trippy. All right, let me set this up for a hot dip. All right, we're back with the hot dip apparatus all set up, obviously on a new day here with the sun shining behind me and some new dribs. But our goal today now is to dye the black of the stencil that we just weeded out. I have this handy dandy skillet that I use for my hot dips. I love it. I got this thing probably, I don't know, maybe two, three years ago now. I made my first hot dip mix inside of it. I haven't taken it out since. It's been inside. I, you know, I add more water or dye as needed. And then every time I use it, just like I'm gonna do now, I stir it up good. And I've noticed using it several times that the dye likes to, as the water like evaporates in here, the dye likes to like harden on the sides and settle on the bottom. So when I stir it, I make sure that I'm kind of scraping the sides with my little plastic fork here. And then I do the same thing when I'm stirring it inside. I'm scraping the bottom to make sure that any dye that's settled down there, I'm agitating and, and you know mixing back into the, the grander mix. My original recipe for this was one full pack of I Dye Poly Black and then eight cups of water. And then I heat it up to about 125 degrees or so. That's another nice thing about the skillet. You know, I have the temperature dial here and I know exactly what I'm setting it at. I stir it up real good like this and then bang, we got another mix ready to go. I've dipped countless di discs into this mix. We got the disc right there. We'll show the front camera too. And now you can see there's a bunch of bubbles and crap in here. I don't want those bubbles trapped underneath the disc when I set it in there because that pocket of air will leave like a bubble mark instead of a die mark. 
the best way I found to get rid of the bubbles isn't to pop them, it's to try to get them up against the side because whatever type of tension it is, the bubbles will stick to the side. <laughs> stick to the side. Like that. Now when I put this in, it's not as important as with the bed, but I still kind of like roll it in just like when, you know, when I'm putting it in a lotion bed or a glue bed or something like that. All with the purpose of trying not to trap air underneath. I know that if I like move it all towards one side instead of just like plopping it straight down in, my chances of trapping an air bubble underneath are way lower. Okay, and then really it only takes about 10 minutes inside the hot tip to get like a deep dark jet black but for stencils where there's like bigger spaces that were dying like this one i like to give it five minutes take it out and check to make sure no air bubbles got trapped underneath and then drop it in for another five for like coloring page type images line art type images i'll just put it in for the whole 10 minutes and not worry about it if there's a tiny little bubble trap somewhere you know i can touch that up with a brush or whatever if need be. But with the stencils with bigger spaces, it's always five, take a check, and five. So I'm gonna let this sit for five minutes. Alexa, set a timer for five minutes. Five minutes, starting now. And then I'll be back and we'll check on it together. Mm. Okay, that was five minutes. Let's give a look. I'm just gonna get a paper towel ready. Looking good. Don't notice any bubble spots. Pull those out of the way. Roll that puppy back in there. And now we'll give her another five. All right, that's another five. Are you as excited as I am? Dig in. Now, we got a bunch of teeny tiny little pieces of vinyl in there. And the adhesive was just heated up. So, like, just rubbing it with a paper towel, what can happen is you can, like, snag or catch one of those little tiny pieces of vinyl and pull it up. So, at this stage, after I've kind of, like, wiped the outside where the bigger pieces are, I'm just patting the disc dry instead of wiping it, especially towards the center where the teeny tiny pieces are. I don't want to rip them up. Feeling pretty good about the black, especially on a disc that has some translucence. I mean, you can still see through it a little, but it's pretty good. All right, I'm gonna get the hot dip stuff all out of the way, set the turntable back up and we'll be back to rock. Okay, we're back in position here. I, I've been doing a lot of thought on how I wanna color in and fill out the rest of this Fraser spiral. There are 20 sections left going around that we have to color in. I so wish that there was 21 or 18, it was some division of three, so that I could do pink, red, purple all the way around. But we're gonna have to separate it into fours. So I'm gonna let one be the pink of the disc, and then the next I'm gonna dye pink, and hopefully it gets like a darker shade of pink, and then red, and then purple. And then when it spins, not only will it have the spiral effect, but hopefully the colors, you know, buzzing by will kind of add to that and it'll look extra trippy. Now, there's all sorts of ways that you can color in those different sections. One of the ideas that I had was to do four consecutive hot dips, to peel one section, and then to put it into a like a red hot dip for like just a minute and then to peel the next section and then to put it in again for two minutes and then the next section yada yada and then yada yada and then you would have four different shades of red you know that it would spin through or purple or whatever you know whatever color you wanted to do um, but i think because i want to do different colors that leaves us with you know a, one of three different options really you could do brushwork which you've seen me do that a million times so i'm not going to do that or we could do it with some kind of topper 
for the sake of time and getting this video done today, instead of a lotion topper, which the lotion has to sit for like a long time, 8, 12, 24 hours, to really get good saturation on this neoplastic, I'm going to do uh, a detergent topper instead, the, lurg the, the, <laughs> the lurgent. The detergent and the lotion mix, you know, it's it's the same ratios and all that kind of stuff, the same mix basically. It's just that with the detergent mix, I can bring heat into the equation to kind of speed things up. Whereas with the lotion, if I put it under a heat lamp or into the food dehydrator, when the lotion dries out, it stops transferring color to the disc well and you know, it, I, I don't ever use heat with lotion. So for the sake of speed, I'm going to use the detergent mix instead. So what I need to do now is to peel off just one, just for, I'm going to peel off just for the pink. So one in every four of these rounds of spiraled squares. So skip three, pick one. Okay, I didn't mess it up. <laughs> now, I'm gonna get in on that center part and just make sure Yep, there's like a couple rows of little guys in here that need some attention. Alright, everything is picked that needs picked. There is a little bit of adhesive here and there that's left behind on the disc. I'm going to use one of these little squares that I picked off earlier to just lift with the, the adhesive that's on this little scrap to lift the adhesive off the disc. It likes to stay behind in the areas where like the impression of the old stamp is. For some reason, the adhesive likes to stick to that, you know, plastic that was burnt by the hot stamp a little bit. So like when you know that you can kind of look for those spots. But as soon as you put these magnifying glasses on and get at the right angle, you can pretty easily see the adhesive that's left on. It takes a couple of pushes and pulls, ups and downs, but starts pulling it up and pulling it up clean. But you need to get the adhesive up that's left behind before you start putting more dye down because this adhesive will block the dye mixture from contacting the disc and penetrating the plastic. And then you'll have patchy spots or spots where like there's no dye, you know, no, no, no dye got in there at all. All right, that's looking pretty clean. All right, now I'm gonna get I got my detergent mix right here. I got my, this is Neon Cerise Pink. And then I got Radical Red ready for the next layer. And then Fuchsia ready for the next layer. Now this mixture right here, these are little four ounce guys. I use my McScooper Tim right here. That is a quarter teaspoon. I put two, three, four of those bad boys in there to four ounces of the detergent mix and then mix that stuff up real good. What's best to get the detergent or the dye to mix well through the detergent is to put the dye in there first and then put like a little bit of steaming water in just enough to heat it like to cup to wet it all and then you know stir that up really good and then put the the detergent in there and then mix that bad boy and it really helps uh, the dye distribute evenly through the detergent mix. And now I'm just going to apply, apply it to the disc. And I'm just going to, you know, paint it on top 
and then when it's all covered, we'll stick it in the dehydrator, let it cook, and then move on to the next color. Now, normally I would say, like, it doesn't really much matter if you get it over the black, because if the black is true black, like, putting color over it isn't going to make it anything else. It's just going to stay black. But, because this disc is translucent, and, like, I know that it's not true, but it's pretty damn black, but I know it's not true black, I'm going to, like, just be kind of careful. I don't want to blotch all over the black areas and then have, you understand, have it show. Now, the downside of this detergent mix compared to the lotion mix is it's way, it's much more viscous. And it likes to droop and run. Like you can already see it here near the edge, kind of piling up towards the bottom. The lotion, it's so much thicker, it kind of stays where you put it a little easier. So that's, that's like the trade-off with me being able to use heat and to speed up it, it taking the dye. But I'm gonna try to pay attention to it and just keep pushing my little detergent mix squares up to where they need to be as I go. All right, it's all covered. I kind of had to keep going back around and touching up these outside squares because that's where there's the most slope on the disc and the detergent mix is wanting to run down to the edge of the rim. Uh, so like, I, I tend to it all the way up until right before I put it in and then, you know, I just let, let things go from there. But I still wanna make sure that there's, you know, pretty consistent and full coverage on all these little squares. The areas, because I'm trying to stay within the lines, where things usually need attention is around the edges. Where it can be like a much thinner coat there, and then, you know, dye a lighter shade because of it. I'm feeling pretty good about this. I'm cover this up. This stuff is such a mess. This detergent mix gets everywhere. All right, now I'm like super hoping that this <laughs> pink comes out a much, a different, a darker shade of pink than the actual plastic color. I'm gonna do a little cheat move here and I'm gonna peel one of these little rings from the center to expose, oh, son of a biscuit eater. Look, I stuck my hand in it. At least I only stuck my hand in it in one spot. <laughs> Touch that little spot up. Bozo. All right, now I'm gonna take and put this in the dehydrator. Now, my dehydrator has, it's really weird. You don't like dial the temperature in, it jumps in increments of nine. <laughs> so I'm gonna put this in at 122 for an hour. And then I'll take it out, rinse it off, and we'll see how we're looking in terms of did we get to a darker shade that's going to at least separate it from the clear plastic when I pull that off. I'm going to do one more little round to touch up just to make sure the stuff that's running stays in its place. And then, you know, if it needs a second coat, it needs a second coat. It's definitely going to dye it a different shade of pink. There's no question about that. But I want it to be noticeably darker than the plastic color. So we can all cross up our fingers and toes. And then in an hour, we'll reconvene and see how it came out. All right, here we go. The pink is uh, all washed off. You know, I peeled this little guy right here. It's maybe it's better to show the above camera to kind of compare the pink against. And it's definitely darker. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how much darker it's going to be. But maybe we'll have to go over a little bit, but. Can't, probably won't be able to tell until we keep moving. So off comes the next round of vinyl. This, once we get it off, will be the red section. OK, 
Okay, that's all picked. Now I'm going to do the same thing that I did last time. I'm going to go up in there nice and close with the mag glasses and just make sure I got all those itty bitty pieces that are close to the inside. And then I'll also clean the adhesive off the disc as well. All right, now this time, instead of doing like each one all the way in, I was thinking about this, I'm gonna start in the center and work my way out. That way I don't have to keep like fixing these outside ones that are on the slope as the die mix droops. So I'm gonna leave my magnifying glasses on for more minutes as I work on the center part here and then work my way out and hopefully I'll be way less likely to get my hands on stuff as well that way. And I'm trying my hardest not to get the dye mix over the pink areas that I've already dyed because it will dye red right over them and then will ruin this multicolor effect that I'm trying to get here. Crap. See what happens when you have way too much on the brush? You get a big drip. Part of the beauty of this detergent mix though is if you act quick, you can clean it up with very little damage. Okay, that method of working from the center out went way better. Let's do a little more touch up here, now that it's all down. Man, do I love taking those off. <laughs> Cover this disaster waiting to happen up. And I'm gonna do the same thing I did with the pink. I'm gonna set this bad boy into the food dehydrator at 122 for an hour and then we'll come back and take on the purple mm. okay here we are after the red this is more what I was talking about in terms of some contrast and it really shows off some of why I love using that detergent mix like it is such clean full fills in each one of these sections it's the same consistent shade of red here's what I'm gonna do before we move on is just cut some of this excess off the back so that we're not looking at it through the disc and kind of distorting our vision. Okay, that was easy. All right, there, now we got a much better view of things without like all sorts of different colors underneath in different spots. But that red looks super clean, right? All right, now we are going to move on and do the purple section. And then once, once that's done, we peel the rest up. I'm gonna decide what happens with the last section. If it's too close to the pink, I'm just gonna do it another color. If there's enough contrast or it's close, we'll see what I, maybe we'll try and darken the, the other pink section up a little. We'll cross that bridge in a minute. getting close see if I missed anything now I'm gonna clean up the little adhesive bits all right that looks pretty clean wasn't terribly easy but we got it done leave these glasses on and start in the center again. This time I'm using Prochem's Fuchsia for my purple. 
again just like when I was putting down the red I'm making sure that I'm not putting the purple down o over the red like I didn't want to put the red down over the pink so basically I'm like erroring on the side where there's still vinyl but you know if you go slow enough and you use a brush with a small enough tip it's not hard to keep it in the lines if you're if you're not putting it on too thick All right, purple's all down. Pop over this. Bomb waiting to happen up. And then same as the first two rounds, I'm gonna put this in the dehydrator for another hour at 122, and then we'll be back to see how it looks. Okay, back with the purple down. Pretty happy with how that came out. We got some real contrast between all three colors so far, but now comes the moment of truth where we peel off this last set of vinyl and see how well it contrasts from the pink. It's not terrible. It's better than I thought it was going to be. I'm happier with how that looks than I thought I was going to be. There's not like a ton of contrast, but there's enough for it to be doing what I wanted it to be doing. I was, re I was ready to go over that part. Look, I already got the, the yellow lemon zest out that I was gonna go over that, but I'm happy with how it looks. And I'm not gonna put the lemon zest on, so I'm gonna take the rest of the vinyl off. Okay, now, now that all the vinyl's off, I'm not gonna bother with all the pushing and pulling and pushing and pulling to get the rest of the vinyl off. I'm gonna use a little Goo Gone. Now, I don't use the Goo Gone when there's any vinyl left on the disc because there's a chance that it can get underneath the vinyl that you want to stay on the disc and then compromise the adhesive underneath and then you know, you have a piece of vinyl come up that you don't want to. The nice thing about this Goo Gone, it won't reactivate the dye, it won't smear or smudge it but it will take any of like the topical goop that's left over and it'll clean up all the rest of the adhesive. All right, boom, that sucker's clean. Now I'm just gonna go give it a soapy cold water rinsing in the sink and then I'll be back and we can finish this bad boy up. Okay, it's all clean, it's all rinsed, it's all dried. The only thing we have left to do now is I'm gonna give it a little spin, excuse me, on the outside here, and then I'll do a little spin job on the back of the rim as well, just to finish it off. I'll fire this turntable up, and then we'll get it centered. When I'm not using my little spin die rig, centering jig, which I use all the time when you guys aren't looking. I just don't like to use it in the tutorials because I want, it, I want it to be done in a way that everybody can do it if they don't have the jig. So anyway, I get it as close as I can with my hands and then I bring in something like the back end of a Sharpie or my little blade here has a cover on it that works perfect. key is once you get it there it's holding it steady. I think I'm like right on the OCD edge of it. You can, <laughs> you can play this game for hours. But you can tell mostly by the just as much by the sound as anything else. You'll hear a rhythm that means it's not centered. When it is centered, it'll just be one consistent groove sound. There we go. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is put some black down to just kind of like finish off this 
outer edge of the Fraser spiral. And then we'll figure out what I'm gonna do outside of that when that time comes. Okay, it's gonna take a few coats. This black line's a little thicker than I wanted it, but it's no big deal. that if I need to want to make it darker I can come back over it now let's do purple and a little red I'm gonna start with some purple and then come into some red that is a tasty purple fade right there oh it looks so hot against the pink too but I'm still gonna bring the red in So when I'm fading two colors into each other, start a little lower than I think I normally would where I want the fade line to be. And I kind of empty the brush of some of the dye onto the disc. Like so. And then go back up over where I started with the disc a little, or I'm sorry, with the brush a little bit drier and go back over the other color kind of blend the fade of the two of them together as opposed to doing it in the beginning when the brush is soaked and then it kind of screws up that line I'm gonna bring a little acetone into the equation pour some into this little cap right here I'm gonna get one of these fat q-tips give it a little dip and then I'm gonna Try to do a little blending of these two colors here. Okay, I like that. I'm just gonna give it one little run over with the purple and I think that might be there. Not this doesn't like match this red per se. I doubt it ever will with how, with how that satin soaked. But I'm gonna call that rock and roll, give it a flip, and then do the same thing on this side. I think we got it. Oh, oh man. Time to clean up bread. Soak it up, paper towels. All right. I'm gonna call that crisis averted. Kinda. It's just gonna be red there. There's worse colors for it to be. Could've spilled brown. All right, back to work. Man, that looks so fresh. I love that purple into the pink and uh, purple into the red into the pink. I don't even need to blend that one anymore. It just came out super clean. I can dig it. All right, let's put the next spill hazard away. And with that, I think we got a we got a done disc here. See the back side there. It's outside. I'll show it to this camera as well. And now let's see if we can make it get it funky by making it spin. Up. Whoa! Did I just set that disc down perfectly centered? Pretty close. All right, so 
This is more than just one optical illusion. It looks like a spiral, even though it's not. It's circles. But if you watch it spin for a minute, I'm going to get it at a speed where you can actually make out what's going on. But if you just watch it spin for a minute, and then when I stop it, it'll look like it's still spinning when you keep staring at it. It's crazy. Ready? Oh my gosh, it's doing it to me. <laughs> I'm not even looking at it straight on. Ah, oh, it's so cool. All right, well that's that. Hope you enjoyed and learned a ton. And you know, you could dig me talking to you instead of the normal <clears throat> beats the whole entire time. And now we can switch it back to my talking head and talk about other things. <laughs> Woo! That was a doozy, huh? <laughs> Man, a lot. If you sat through that whole damn thing, like, I hope at the very least you came out of it having learned a ton and are left on the other side thinking to yourself, yo, if that bozo can do that, so can I. <laughs> and you are 100% right. Like, the only thing that is left now is the doing it part. So get to doing it. Here's, here's what I will say before moving on to all of the coupon codes and giveaway stuff, like about the die itself. Like, if you're new to the game, this is one of your first few dies. Like, I might want to substitute in the lotion mix where I was using the detergent mix. And listen, it's like the exact same mix and ratios and dyes and all that kind of stuff. Just instead, when you're mixing it, substitute in cocoa butter where I put in laundry detergent and then, you know, shake that crap all up. And it's just so much easier to use, to work with on the disc itself while you're doing the dyeing. And it doesn't like run and droop all over the place and you don't need a food dehydrator or a, hot, a heat lamp to cook it. Like the only thing is, it just needs to sit on top for way longer than the one hour I was able to get away with in the food drainer. Like I, like I said in the video, like eight or 12 or even 24 hours to get like really good saturation on plastics like these. But outside of that, like everything else in the video, easy peasy lemon squeezy, and you are all over it. Which serves as a great transition to our next piece of business making it even easier for you to whip one of these bad boys up for yourself. Here's the plan. We are now going to be offering 50% off on one of our full diet yourself kits with all of the dyes and bits and pieces and stuff you need in two copies of this exact same stencil so that you can jump head first into this rabbit hole with the rest of us. Here's how to get it. Just go to the Diet Yourself Kits page of the store on our super fancy website. It looks just like this, obviously. And then choose the full kit. Maybe while you're here, you can pick up some bag pins and T-Diddy stickers. I don't know. And then, <laughs> and then when you're checking out, use the coupon code TDDARMY2023 Army 2023 in the little coupon code box here for 50% off of your kit now normally we do like some stupid sense of urgency thing with the coupon code and say like it's only good for the next two weeks while this giveaway is running but not this one okay because like i really want there to be no excuses for you to have a chance to get at it so this one will last indefinitely and even if you're catching this video a couple years later you can still use it and get at it so get at it <laughs> i'm telling you i promise that you'll be glad you did this is now the part that i will be going over the giveaway instructions we already kind of hit that in the beginning but just in case you missed it or you're new around these part parts i'll throw it up on the screen again for you there it's, it's real easy just be a subscriber to the difference is doing it comment down below on this video and then share this sucker with another hucka. That's all, all it ever takes to get in there. The comment sucker upper takes care of the rest. I'll let it out of its cage on February 1st to suck one of you right up. And then I'll come back right here on the YouTube channel later that day 
to announce who the winner is of our Fraser Spiral disc giveaway. All right, that is way more than enough. <laughs> I'm exhausted. And if you sat through that whole thing, well, damn. <laughs> you are awesome. And you definitely qualify as one of the nutbags. These are my people. <laughs> Listen, all kidding aside, thank you so much for clicking whatever it is that brought you here and for staying however long that you did. We really appreciate your support. It means the world to me. Best of luck in the giveaway. And until we catch you on the next one, you better keep doing it. Yeah. You hear what I say? I said everybody. Oh. Heartbreaker. Oh, no. <laughs>